This is William Attar Friday Night Rivals, driven by Matthews Auto. CW Rochester proudly welcomes you to Honeyway Falls, Lima, where tonight it's week three of the Section 5 season as the Wildcats of Wilson visiting the Cougars from Honeyway Falls, Lima. This is Friday Night Rivals. William Attar's Friday Night Rivals, driven by Matthews Automotive. So glad you're with us here tonight, Chief Attaglia, along with Mike Danger. 0-2 for Wilson, two tough losses. As far as HFL, they're thinking for a repeat here. Absolutely, and when we talked to head coach Greg Mortier of Wilson, he said he'd rather lose by 50 than lose those close games as they did weeks one to Pal Mack and Dansville Wayland Cohawken just last week to start the 2021 season. This is a Wilson team that tonight could certainly win this game as we take a look for tonight's keys of the game. And again, the keys of the game presented by William Attar. And for Wilson, basically, hey, you want HFL's offense off the field, then you stay on the field with your offense. And talking to head coach Mortier, not happy at all with his tackling through the, through the, through the first two weeks. Yeah, they want to stay fundamentally sound on defense. And he mentioned his team does need to tackle better. And you're going to need to tackle better against this high power. HFL offense who have been balanced to date a lot of different playmakers and that needs to be the key here tonight and certainly they don't want to allow the big play for Wilson to strike here our keys to the game as we are presented by Matthews Automotive for those keys we take a look at our players to watch here tonight and a little bit of a surprise here is Khalil Lewis who was the quarterback first two games he's going to be the running back position here my danger we had a chance to talk to Khalil really the leader of this team really impressive as the team captain the lone team captain for the Wildcats he'll be playing a little H back tonight but don't be surprised if we see him behind center at some point tonight as well Gino and continuing the great tradition here at HFL the running back position Zach Meacham as the team running out onto the field. The noise here. Zach Meacham certainly loves football. Yeah, he's adjusted to this new team here. The offseason was short-lived, and he was inspired by the senior leaders who won that section championship last season here in the spring. 12 yards per carry through two games. Yeah, I think they might want to feed him the rock tonight, Gene. Well, we'll have the coin toss coming up here in just a little bit. It is Friday Night Rivals, and we're glad you're with us here on CW Rochester. Here is tonight's coin toss. The coin toss presented by Apollo Concrete Coating. Open your garage 
to a new floor as the captain's meeting out at midfield. Mike Danger, I got to say, this is one of the fun atmospheres here at HFL. Certainly the community comes out for it. We had youth football players, youth cheerleaders here tonight, just a community event. Yeah, and head coach John Ross expressed that to us when we talked to him earlier this week, Gene. It's a strong program with lots of kids locally showing interest in this football at a time where some schools are struggling to field a roster. So a very strong program at HFL. Looking to repeat as section champs, their first section championship in the spring, Gene. As uh, we got a real close up of that coin. So Wilson will defer, and it will be HFL to receive the opening kickoff. Once again, the Apollo Concrete Coating coin toss. Apollo Concrete Coating, open your garage to a new floor. HFL finally, finally getting over the hump last year. And you talked to, to John Russ, uh, you know, certainly somebody that, it, even though they've had a lot of turnover here, feels confident about this year's team off to a 2 0 start. Yeah, he's really impressed with this young team. They graduated 20 seniors last season, that sectional championship team. Uh, some inexperience, but a good start to the season. We'll see if it continues tonight. Here's our national anthem. From HFL performing our national anthem, a three sport athlete and so select choir member. At the midfield strike, Seamus Gillis. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air. That our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star spangled banner yet wave? Or the land of the free and the Great rendition by Seamus, a student here at HFL as we are ready for football week three here of the season. And it, it's important to know, just like Class AA here, both of these teams will make sectionals. But for Wilson, they get a little bit of confidence here. They've been working hard, and it's, each game has come down to a play here, a play there for their 0-2 start. Yeah, and, and offensively for them, they want to kind of control the ball and try to keep that HFL offense on the sideline. They had some good drives their first two weeks here, just struggled to finish there at the end. But, you know, mutual respect here between these two coaches as HFL knows that Wilson is a well-coached team. They're big. They're they're athletic and they're fundamentally sound. It could present some one-on-one -on -one matchup issues for the Cougars tonight. Now, at quarterback, we mentioned Brody Young earlier, but we should point out really the future of this team is the sophomore, uh, Matthew Meacham, and number six. And for Matthew Meacham, He's got a JV game tomorrow, so they might be working him in tomorrow rather than tonight. If uh, Brody Young is in for the whole game tonight, that will not be a surprise. And it, it, you get the sense, Gene, don't you, that this HFL program is just built on each class learning from the class before them. Zach Meacham, a name that we'll be calling a lot tonight, his younger brother, the future uh, of the program at quarterback. Uh, his younger brother, uh, you know, is a sophomore. Well, here's the A-plus junk removal kickoff. A-plus, we want your junk. So Killenbeck will be deep back for the Cougars. And that'll be Kaidel Myrie to do the honors here. And we're underway as it'll be a squib kick. That's a live football. Did Wilson get it? It's on the near side. And they did! Big play for Wilson. I don't know if that was the plan or not. And recovering on the near side, Jalen Hardiman. 
Well, we say it all the time, Gene, three phases of the game, right? You have to make plays in, in offense, defense, and special teams, and a great start for Wilson making a play with a little squib kick here that caught HFL a little by surprise. Weren't ready to recover that one, and the speed of the Wildcats to recover gives them the ball to start the game. Yeah, as we'll introduce our starting lineups here tonight, this is Friday Night Rivals. Willie Matar's starting lineup has first for the visiting Wilson Wildcats who are in the white uniforms with the red and black trim as it'll be Khalil Lewis at the H-back position. Cashmere Bradford Sawyer is your quarterback. Michael Wigg Wigg Wiggins, Javon Williams, Malik Key, Darren Clanton, and Marquise Edmondson, your offensive line. We'll get to the rest of the starters after this first down carry. And this will be Demond Clark. And Clark will get a nice gain. Get it down to about the 34-yard line. Demond Clark, Khalil Lewis will be in the backfield. Jalen Hardiman, Devine Callaway, and Dorian Flood are your wide receivers. Yeah, and bright future for Demond Clark, a sophomore for the... Uh, for the Wildcats and using some speed there to get around the edge for a nice little five-yard gain on first down. We will set up the HFL Cougar defense after this second down, and we'll call it five from the 34 if you're just tuning in, as there it is right there in front of you. They run the four-down lineman for three, as that's going to be a broken tackle. No, they're going to call him down behind. They will call him down by contact. Those starters defensively, Jack Harvey, Ryler Kester, Mitchell Bulling, and Nolan Smith, the defensive line, Zach Meacham, Carson Joint, and Ryan Gary are your linebackers. At the corners, Donnell Hall and Aiden Gould, and at the safeties, Colton Miller and JT Killenbeck. I had the chance to talk to Mitchell Bulling earlier this week as well, who's grown through this program, plays both offensive and defensive line, and that section title gave them the momentum into this season. Looking to repeat this year in Class B. So Khalil Lewis will go into motion, and he was the quarterback these first two games. He is in the cleats, bright yellow, as he will get the handoff inside, a little inside handoff that will go down to the 30 to bring up fourth and short. Khalil Lewis. So it's a positive game. We'll call it a game of seven. Yeah, Khalil Lewis, such an impressive young man. Fourth down. And you can see the double handoff there to the inside just short of the first down the Wilson offense staying on the field looking to convert a fourth and short Gene so just outside the 30 yard line HFL fans making some noise banging on those stands they call it the Cougar freight train here it's fourth down fourth and one the handoff going left side second effort I think he got it that's Damon Clark Demont Clark with the first down Demont for Clark HFL. Clark. That first down, a kangaroo first down. Lakeside Roofing and Contracting, home of Kangaroo. We hop to it. Nice little push there on the left side of the line for Wilson to get the first down there. And Demont Clark, uh, the sophomore at 6'1", 160 pounds, getting that push for the first down to keep the drive alive for the yeah. for the Wildcats. First and 10 from the 28. Kashmir Bradford Sawyer will operate out of the shotgun. He's got Clark alongside of him. Drops back, fires left side. It's in and out of the hands of Hardiman, the intended receiver on the far side. Yeah, I have a feeling you're going to see Kashmir throwing the ball a little bit tonight, but I, I know that one of the keys to this uh, Wilson attack is to try and keep HFL's offense on the sideline, so they want long, sustained drives in the run game. Incomplete pass, stops the clock, and that's certainly not what Wilson wants to do tonight. Second down and 10. Keeps the uh, defense a little honest, though, I suppose, on the positive side is this will be Callaway to the near boundary. A screen pass, far side, going right back to Hardiman, and Hardiman will get positive yardage, and I kind of like that play call, Danger, because, okay, the, the previous play, maybe you could have come up with that. You have confidence, and you were going to go right back to you, and that is going to set up third and short. Yeah, and, and listen, we found out, uh, as you found out, when, you know, who was going to be starting at quarterback tonight, because Khalil Lewis had been taking the majority of the snaps, uh, playing H-back tonight, and uh, giving way to uh, tonight's quarterback, Kashmir Bradford Sawyer, for the Wildcats. It's third down and four. As the train horn sounds here, rolling. Nope, he's going to take off. As Bradford Lewis, he's got the first down, picks up a block, picks up another. He's inside the 20, inside the 15. The ball comes out. And it's a big takeaway for HFL. 
Well, that was a great play. Cashmere Bradford uh, Stewart, you know, juking and jiving and making uh, making plays with his feet and using his athleticism. Got a little bit too cute. Popped hard by that uh, by that Cougar defense, forcing the turnover. So the Cougars will take over on their own 15. Big play for HFL. This is Friday Night Rivals, presented by William Attar, driven by Matthews Automotive on CW Rochester. Chris, you want to have him take it right out? He can't hear me. And back here at HFL, no score here in the first quarter. You know, we talked to HFL head coach John Russ this week, guys. A 2002 alum, he played quarterback and defensive back here for the Cougars. He told us during his four years as a player, they only got to the sectional semifinals four times, and they lost all four times. This past year in the spring, they win the title for the first time, and he told us it means everything to him and this HFL community. Kevin, it is great to hear your voice tonight. Kevin Roche on the sideline as uh, Zach Meacham right up the gut. Getting a first down, that's another first down from Kanga Roof. Lakeside Roofing and Contracting, home of Kanga Roof, where we hop to it. Zach Meacham averaging 12 yards a carry through two games so far this young season, and you're just seeing him ripping off a big game there to, a big game there to kick off this drive. As that it will, goes for a gain of 16, he's going to get the flare on the far side. That's going to be another first down. Again, Kangaroo first down, like side roofing and contracting home at Kangaroo we have to. Killing back with some open, open space there on that play and the, the flare out to the uh, outside. Made a couple guys miss. And another big gain for the Cougars. Did you see the play action? So let's set up here the starting lineup on offense here for HFL. Brody Young, number 12, is your quarterback. Zach Meacham is your running back. Offensive line from left to right, Mitchell Bling, Harden Meehan, Carson Joint, Ryan Gear, Charlie Kirby is your right tackle as the handoff going in between the tackles. And here is going to be Meacham. Meacham has the first down, gets upended, but not before he gets inside the 40-yard line. Another big gain. We'll call it a gain of 14. And that was Kashmir Bradford Sawyer, who's playing quarterback on the other side of the ball for Wilson with the uh, tackle there, upending uh, Meacham after the big gain. One of the keys to this game, though, we talked about it before, that, that head coach Greg Mortier said he wanted out of his defense. Fundamentally sound and looking for this team to tackle better. They are moving it here. Don't have any time to get the starters. And Ben Carson, who has three touchdowns on the season. He wears number four, JT Killenbeck, who just caught a pass. And number three, Nolan Smith, will also call his name and number tonight. He wears number 88 on the outside, as well as number 11, Aiden Gould. First and 10 as the handoff goes inside. And this time, he's going to be bottled up. That's Ridgeway. Rajon Ridgeway, the inside linebacker for the Wilson Wildcats. Wilson, there's their defense, and they're going to run just, you know, basically eight guys up front. They're going to try to try to dare them to throw here tonight. Eight men in the box. The Jahari Wilson, Dequan Herring, Brandon Davis, and Vajan Praler. But Von Joseph Praler are your defensive linemen. Damon Clark, Rajan Ridgeway, Jeremiah Eden, and Demarion Coley Henderson, your linebackers. We'll get to the secondary after the second down and 11 as Young in the pocket, setting up that screen nicely, but it goes in and out of the hands of the intended receiver. That being uh, Donnell Hall. Kashmir Bradford Sawyer, Jalen Hardeman are your corners, and Dolson Flood, your safety, playing the free safety position there for HFL. Nice pursuit there to put pressure on Young by the, uh, by the Wilson Wildcats and uh, forcing that throw a little bit off target and unable to make the completion. Now it's third down and 11. So where Wilson kind of bent, now they can't afford to break here. Meacham is in the backfield, and there's movement right before. There's no flag. Now the whistle will blow. Call, I would Dad. think this has got to be on Wilson here. I'll 
So you go from third and 11 to third and six. Up and the tackle coming out of his position when the Wilson player coming over. So that indeed was the encroachment by the Wildcats. Third down and six. Now down to the Wildcat 33. Cougars against the Wildcats tonight. Stacked receivers to the right and to the left. No tight end here. As Young fires. Man coming out of the backfield. And that's going to be a good open field tackle on the far side to bring up fourth down. Yeah, Denot Hall, Hall in the backfield giving Zach Meacham a, a spell on the uh, sideline. Meacham sitting out the play and, and Hall out of the backfield making that uh, flare catch out there to the uh, right side for a couple. That's a sophomore, Jeremiah Redden with a great tackle to bring up fourth down. Hall will come off the field here. This is going to be fourth down and six. No gain on that last play. Nolan Smith will be the receiver to the top of your screen three receivers in a bunch formation to the near side. And Zach Meacham back at running back. Fourth down. Movement again. Fans are thinking this one's on Wilson. No, this time they're going to call it against HFL. Look like he had the uh, right guard for HFL. They're getting a little far back in his stance, just tipping backwards and finally falling on his rear for the uh, for the movement there. Gonna be Ryan Gear. Fourth down and that was the fourth and six before the down marker makes it look like fourth and ten but fourth and eleven yeah with that regardless it's going to be a punt it's going to be a short one as John Russ will not take any chances and he'll play the field Cruz position as it goes out of bounds and Wilson will begin their second offensive series of the night we have no score here we are in the first this is William Attar's Friday Night Rivals driven by finish. Matthews Automotive we'll and this is CW Rochester And Wilson, they gave up some chunk plays at the beginning of that drive, but they tightened up when it mattered the most. Yeah, penalty from uh, HFL on the offensive line, a little movement, pushing them back to fourth and less than manageable. So now Wilson gets to kind of do what they know they need to do in order to win this game, which is keep their offense on the field and keep that Cougar offense on the sideline. That's Kashmir Bradford Sawyer, the sophomore quarterback, as the inside handoff and the defensive okay, line doing their job for HFL to bring up second and long. Idel Myrie is in at the running back position. At that carry. Second ten. Call this second down and nine up to the 19. Screen pass near side. Turning up field and that will be beyond the marker. First On down. Nice play. This flood getting that down. pass up to the 32 yard line for a gain of 13. What if I told you that there were only three seniors starting offensively huh. for the Wildcats tonight? Blood being one of them. Yeah, they're going to have to play, you know, a mature game here, even though they're a little bit inexperienced on the uh, offensive side of the ball. But you see the screen pass working for them tonight. Nice gain and a first down for the Wildcats. Paul and Meacham tackling on that for HFL. First and 10 up to the 33. And we get a whistle and timeout called by Wilson. Their first here in this first half comes with four, 14 remaining here in quarter number one on their second drive. Head coach Greg Mortier 
the Wilson Magnet Wildcats 21 years in the program. And before that, 11 years uh, with Edison Tech, Jay. Remember the 70s, Team to win a sectional title since 2006. That team in 2006, Marshall. Mm. And mutual respect by these two coaches. Head coach John Russ so always talks about how he sees Coach Mortier at various coaching camps. Know that Wilson is a very well coached team, that they're big, they're athletic, and they're fundamentally sound. So after the Wilson timeout, this will be first and 10 up to the 33. Khalil Lewis will be in the H-back position. As the handoff will go inside, and they're going right back to the junior, Myrie. And it's like last time, Myrie is not going to find much, maybe one on the play. A little bit of a size disadvantage here when you consider Myrie, the junior, 5'6", 151. And you see a little bit more of that, uh, more of that experience from the uh, more mature uh, Cougar defense. Stop that play short. Second down and nine from the 34. Flood will be the receiver to the near side. Callaway going up to the top of your screen. Look at the uh, HFL, they are packing them in here. Everybody close up to that line of scrimmage. And the screen pass is gonna go to the far side. That'll be Callaway trying to get around his man. He cannot. Good open field tackle on the far side. And that is number five, Cole Chipperino with the tackle. Yeah, Sheparino wasn't fooled by this screen pass on the outside. Good, strong, fundamentally tackle, fundamental tackling there. Dragging him down behind the line. At some point, Wilson will have to go vertically here. Their passes have pretty much been to the, the screen variety here so far. This is going to be third down and ten. Chance for HFL to get off the field. And here will be the razzle-dazzle handoff. This will be Lewis who breaks a tackle, and he gets in the open field. He's close to the marker. That's Khalil Lewis with the carry for Wilson. Lewis, Khalil Lewis, Lewis is a special down. kid, G. We had the chance to talk to him earlier this week. The lone team captain for the Wildcats. Plays basketball during the winter season and prepares for the football season by hitting the weight room in the spring. You can see some of that strength here that the senior shows off getting around the corner, shedding a tackle, lowering his shoulder. They're going to mark him about two yards shy. So we'll call this fourth and two, and no indication that Wilson is going to punt this way. I love this, going for it on fourth and two with their own 41. You're the underdog, why not? HL fans uh, making noise here on this fourth down play. Dilworth going into motion for the Wildcats. The snap. Has the flood on the near side. Flood fighting to the boundary. He's got the first down, and he breaks a tackle. Getting up to the 48. A gain of seven and a first down for the Wildcats. And you're seeing HFL, when they get those players to the outside, HFL not only trying to make the tackle on the outside, but going for that strip as well. That's another kangaroo first down. Lakeside Roofing and Contracting. Home of Kangaroo. We hop to it, going for it on fourth and two in your own territory, keeping the drive alive. And you see Nolan Smith there on the outside at the end of that play, dropping the hammer, trying to jar that ball loose like they were able to do the first drive that Wilson had the football. Cashmere Bradford Sawyer has been directing here the offense. Remember, there was a third and ten. They've used both downs to keep the drive alive. High snap, Bradford Sawyer, it's a design keeper nonetheless, and Tries to lower the short, but he's going to be stood up right at the 50-yard line for a gain of two. Big hit on the play, no surprise, right in the middle of it. Zach Meacham playing both ways. Impressive, impressive young player. Uh, talks about his success on the offensive line. He gives it to his linemen. He says he can't do what he does offensively without his linemen, and he can't imagine life without football. This is a football player who wants to play at the next level and looking at some D3, D3 schools for next fall. Second down and eight as the Wildcats will go three wide here. One man in the backfield. And the screen pass again. And this time again, nothing. As the screen pass going to Dilworth on the far side. No gain on second down. 
As a tackle by Jack Harvey, the defensive lineman coming out from the end position to make that tackle. It looks like HFL is starting to sniff out those outside screen passes, Gene. We'll see if uh, Wilson comes up with something creative here, maybe in the center of the field. But they've done a pretty good job of controlling uh, this first quarter, keeping the ball. They've certainly dominated time of possession early on. Third and eight at the 50-yard line. As the cheerleaders leading the chance here. Snap. Throw left side in out of the hands and nearly intercepted to bring up fourth down. Well, it was to the middle of the field, or more sort, more, most sort to the, towards the middle of the field. Looked like Lewis was covered nicely on that, so a dangerous pass. And that's when the Chipperino wanted to get his hands on, hoped that he could uh, have the pick there, because he had a lot of open field in front of him. So Callaway is going to punt this away. So unlike last time where it was fourth and two, this is a little more difficult at fourth and eight. It's a good snap. And it's going to be an end over end kick that is going to flip the field position as it's going to be touched on the far side as Killenbeck will not get much of a return. Gets it up to about the 18 yard line as we're in the closing seconds here of the first quarter. Keep tackling Mike Danger, Kevin Roche on the sideline tonight. Steve Sinuso up here in the press box with us tonight. Week three already. Goes by too fast, doesn't it? But man, what a joy to be out here again underneath the lights on a beautiful Friday night in upstate New York. It is just a really beautiful night for folks that might be watching outside of our area tonight. Just a beautiful fall afternoon, 78 degrees, and now nice, crisp, cool evening. What you want here on Friday night, Rivals. And off going to Meacham. has got a head of steam. Taking it, it gets upended. Whoa! Meet him and a flag comes down at the end of that play. Flag on the play. You hold your breath when a player goes head over heels like that. I don't think I've ever seen that. Looking at the card there, it's going to be a personal foul against mm. HFL. Wipe out another big yard, another big gain by Zach Meacham, who at this point in the game, I mean, he looks very strong. I mean, if you're John Ross, uh, a steady dose of Zach Meacham for the rest of the, the first half, seems like that would be your quickest path to getting some points. What will that look like uh, when we get to the second half? And HFL is going to elect to bring this to the end of the first quarter. Head to the second here tonight. No score after one. Wilson in HFL. This is Willie Matar's Friday Night Rivals, driven by Matthews Automotive. And this is CW Rochester. Good, good, good. No, straight in. Yep. All okay, right, guys. No worries. Hear that? Got that, Kevin? Great communication tonight, guys. This is the best communication yeah, I think we've had all it. night. Yeah. Great job, Chris. <laughs> Love you, buddy.
The Illuminating Expression scoring summary of the first half. So far, no points. As uh, Wilton HFL, we go to the second. We send it downstairs to Kevin Roche. Thanks so much, Gene. You know, you mentioned Wilson coming in tonight 0-2, but if you go back to the spring, they've lost their last seven games. And their coach told us earlier this week that their school district was at a little bit of a competitive disadvantage. You know, being in the city school district the last year with COVID, the city school district was fully remote, which means this Wilson team was unable to get in the weight room and unable to have workouts until the spring season arrived. Their head coach says that cost them in the spring. They're trying to catch up here still in the fall, guys. Yeah, thanks, Kevin. And, uh, you know, certainly uh, you, the, the job that Coach Mortier is doing with these young men at Wilson, you know, a couple games that could have gone uh, their direction here. At 0-2, however, as Meacham's going to get the call, picking his way forward, breaks a tackle, gets around Lewis. Lewis will actually spin him down. But now before another big gain, we will call that a gain of 26. And the Wildcats have not faced uh, a spread offense formation like this yet this season. So this secondary is going to be tested tonight as well. But what we're seeing so far is a lot of Zach Meacham. And again, 12 yards of carry through two games. Uh, that line making great holes for him. And he's a hard guy to bring down. Really tough, always prepared mentally, and um, just a good overall athlete for these uh, HFL Cougars. That play was good for a Tracy Door company first down. Get a Tracy Door, you get a whole lot more from the Tracy family. First and 10 at the 39, three wide receivers for HFL. As a quarterback, Young will hand off once again to Meacham, and Meacham will be met in the backfield. Rajon Ridgeway, not the first time we've called his name tonight. That's a gain of three on the play. Yeah, Ridgeway with some good fundamental and tackling there to, to bring down uh, Meacham for one of his shorter gains of the night. That's all of them, fans. HFL fans, give me applause for the cheerleaders down below as. They are giving a full effort here tonight, the HFL cheerleaders. They don't mess around here at HFL. So some families tailgating before yeah. the game, Gene. Great atmosphere here in Honeywood Falls, Lima. Second down and seven at the 36. Brody Young with four touchdown passes on the season. And we get a whistle, and this is going to be the delay of game. So for HFL... Let's be honest, it's plays like that, the personal foul, things that they certainly can clean up here instead of second and six, back them up five. Yeah, it's been a struggle for the uh, Wildcat defense. And they knew it was going to be a tough matchup, certainly a more experienced HFL offense, a little bit more size. And you see some of it here split out wide to the right in 6'5", uh, junior. Nolan Smith, number 88. That's the Cougar Freight train there, the, the, the crazy student section here, as that is going to be nearly intercepted, and that was broken That's up the by the intended receiver on the far side. So, yeah, falls incomplete to bring up third and long. Great defensive call by head coach Greg Mortier and his staff. They sniffed this out right away. They knew the screen was coming. Great pressure up front and almost picked off by Sean Chung. Sean Chung, the 5'10 uh, junior. Third and long. We've yet to have either team enter the red zone here tonight. Young out of the shotgun. This probably is four down territory. Young is going to roll to his right with time. Fires on the run, and that will be caught by Killenbeck. Killenbeck's going to be short of the marker. Gets back the penalty yardage and gets it down to about the 38. HFL hurrying it up here. 
See if they can catch Wilson here as Wilson gets into position. This is fourth down and eight. Young trying the hard count. Wilson didn't bite. He will pause, look back. He's got time. The snap on fourth down. Young going deep. Wants his man is going to be picked off. Nolan Smith, the intended receiver, but it's going to be brought back. This is number 11, Kydale Myrie. Myrie still on his feet. Myrie picking up blocks, and Myrie will be brought down at the 42-yard line. Kydale Myrie with the interception for Wilson. Big play by the Wilson defense, and Kydale Myrie showing off athleticism at the end for that return. You saw the 5'6", 151-pound senior uh, make a big play right when Wilson needed it most. And this is really the first time we've seen Brody Young kind of go deep, uh, put a little bit too much air under this one, and it looked like you could see it looked like you could see Smith coming down with that, but the tip landing in the hands of Myrie and, and the nice return. 40 yards on that return for Kyle Myrie, and for the third time tonight, Wilson going back on offense here. And what, uh, you may say no points. No, this has been an entertaining game here tonight on Friday Night Rivals, as this will be the veteran of this team, Khalil Lewis, getting the handoff inside. Gain of one. Again, Riley Castro with a stop. Actually, give him two Second on and eight, up to the 44. Blood will be the receiver to the near side. Three wide receivers. Cashmere Bradford Sawyer. Takes the snap, another screen pass that's going to the far side and getting buried. And HFL is now getting wise to this play here of Wilson. And it's going to be a loss back to the 39. And that is going to be the corner, Donnell Hall, with the tackle for loss, the junior, to bring up third and long. Yeah, I imagine so far this isn't exactly the way these uh, HFL saw this game going. I'm sure they. Probably thought they were on their way to some points the way they were able to they were able to move the ball early in this game. That turnover, let's see if it proves to be costly here and if they can capitalize on it. This will be third down and 12 at their own 40. HFL sends four. Here going deep. Flood is going to be overthrown. It's going to be intercepted. Here comes the return opportunity to the near side as Flood making the tackle. And HFL with the interception. Now the field position a little bit, but HFL with their second tech away tonight. Essentially a punt, but nice play by Colton Miller, the 150-pound senior, keeping everything in front of him. And as you saw, Kashmir Bradford Sawyer just overthrowing getting a little bit too much on that one. And that's what coaches preach, right? Keep everything in front of you, and good things usually happen. Nice play by Miller. To and give HFL the ball back. See what Brody Young, how he reacts after that interception on the last drive. As we're at the midway point here of quarter number two. No score yet. Young takes the shotgun snap and the handoff inside, breaking an arm tackle. Getting it up to about the 36-yard line. And it'll be Donnell Hall. Hall will come off the field. Meacham coming back out. One thing we learned about uh, HFL quarterback Brody Young, you know, last season sitting behind the starter, uh, really learning and, and really developing and making a giant step up into his senior senior. The teammates here at HFL all noticed the growth that he's made here. How many is Wilson going to send? They're going to send six, and this might go to HFL's benefit, as that is going to be close to the marker, across the 35, up uh, across to the 42. Bring up third and short. You saw some of the usual suspects on defense for the uh, Wildcats. Khalil Lewis in on that play, Kydell Myrie finishing up, and Aiden Gould. Aiden Gould there getting that middle screen. Third down and two. Nolan Smith to the near boundary.
Faking the handoff, and it will be the quarterback keeper and picking his way for the first down. Upon Herring with the tackle on Brody Young. That's the safe play, getting it up to the 50 again and eight. And an HFL first down, that play good for another Tracy Door company first down. Get a Tracy Door, get a whole lot more from the Tracy family. Yeah, you see JT Killen back there uh, making the play and some nifty moves inside, keeping his feet moving and pushing ahead for the first down for the Cougars. Clock rolling on here. A little surprised we haven't seen any points yet, Mike Danger. That fans the Cougar Freight Train. Four wide receivers. Young takes the snap. Man coming around the corner, the throw over the middle, and just in and out of the hands of the intended receiver. Clark in on the coverage. Got to see a little bit of Brody Young's arm talent on that one. He led his receiver perfectly, just a little bit too much on it, not able to make the completion. We asked Coach John Russ, who, who does Brady Young most compare to, or Brody Young most compare to? And he said, yeah, you know, he comes to Tom Brady. He, he's not a guy that's going to get out of the pocket, but if you let him, he can run downhill. Uh, but the big arm, and you saw it on, on display with that last play. JT Killenbeck, the intended receiver, nearly coming down with it. Second down in 10 right at the 50. And again, neither team has entered inside the 20 here tonight as Meacham getting the handoff. Meacham keeping those legs moving and he'll be close, getting it down to about the 41 to bring up third and short. Boy, he's a tough guy to bring down, isn't he? I mean, he just kind of made his way through that line, found the hole, shed a tackler, and it, and it took all of Khalil Lewis's strength at 5'11", 210. He's a leader of this Wilson Wildcat defense to bring him down. Third and one. Meacham stays in at running back out of the shotgun young. The snap, the call going back to Meacham, and Meacham will plow ahead. He breaks tackles. Still on his feet, and finally will be brought down. Big gain on third and one, all the way down to the 25, a gain of 16. Yeah, Meacham on that play. Hey, you might have gotten me on the last play there, Khalil Lewis, but on this play, I'm going to shed you with a little bit of a, look like a little bit of a stiff arm here, as you can see. Uh, Meacham getting through it, just, yeah, a little shoulder shrug. Get off me. Moving ahead, Khalil Lewis uh, attempting to make the tackle there for the Wildcats. First down, Cougars. Yeah. Good for another Tracy Door company. Tracy Door, you get a whole lot more from the Tracy family. First and 10 of the 26, and this, you can say, has been the best drive so far here for HFL, but can they finish it off as the pitch going near side and getting stood up, and that is just going to be a great John open field tackle. As Hall gets the carry, but uh, with the tackle is number six, Demont Clark. Yeah, Demont Clark has some size for being a sophomore, 6'1". 160 and making a good sound fundamental tackle as we heard earlier that's that's something that coach Greg Mortier is expecting out of his defense looking for them to tackle better and staying fundamentally sound I'm sure that's true of every coach they want their players to tackle better that really was a huge factor in the two losses so far here for Wilson but so far so good no score here at the 26 young looks checks down has a man open and in space and getting out of bounds that is going to be number four benjamin carson so that's carson's first target of the night and it's the first time that we're inside the connors and ferris injury law red zone first down for hfl a tracy door company first down get a tracy door you get a whole lot more from the tracy family yeah you see the check down plenty of open space there for carson to get his first reception of the night HFL is moving. Let's see if they can punch it in and finish this drive. Put the ball at about the 13-yard line. Keep an eye on Nolan Smith. They went to him earlier, but could not bring it down in the red zone. Here will be the handoff going to Meacham. Meacham walks into the end zone. Touchdown. Touchdown. HFL. Zach Meacham. That is his third rushing touchdown of the season. And that's going to be an American custom exteriors and interiors touchdown. The home improvement company that cares. Yeah, it's been Zach Meacham all night tonight. And once again, nobody touching him, getting right into the end zone. When you average 12 yards of carry coming into this game, you knew you were going to see a lot of him. And, and boy, he made that look easy for the first score of the night. 
Carson to hold for the extra point. Carson will hold for Aiden Gould. This comes late in the second quarter, our first points tonight. As the kick, as Joint kicks it up and through. 7 nothing HFL. This is William Attar's Friday Night Rivals, driven by Matthews Automotive on CW Rochester. Steve had that 10 play 66 yards was the drive. During tonight's fourth quarter of the game, we'll be selecting the attorney, William Attar's player of the game. And, well, so far, the leader in the clubhouse, that guy, Zach Meacham, there with his third rushing touchdown of the season. Our only point so far, 7-0 Cougars leading here late in the second. He's been a big part of this offense so far tonight. And head coach John Russ said that, you know, this kid plays with no fear. This offseason, in fact, on a lot of muscle, worked hard in the weight room to get ready for this season as HFL looks to try to repeat as section champions. The illuminating expression scoring summary on that drive as the kick will be down there. And that was a drive where, yeah, it didn't come in one big play, the drive summary. Oh, 10 yards, uh, 10 plays, 66 yards capped by that touchdown pass or that touchdown run. Yeah, coming up at halftime, it's the Empire Tractor of Batavia. We're here to help you grow halftime rapport. We'll have this week's MVP healthcare health insurance built around me, scholar athletes, participating school administrators. Thursday Night Lights, Friday Night Rival highlights from across the country. And, of course, we'll have highlights from here as well and more. That's all coming up. The Empire Tractor of Batavia. We're here to help you grow halftime report. Well, Bertie told me we're heading to Batavia next week. All right. Cannot wait for that. It's Making the rounds in Class B. I like it, Gene. Yeah, I got it. Round Section 5. All right, so can Wilson do something here as Bradford Sawyer... It's bottled up, and he will be brought down. I think we're going to call that a cover sack. Not much he could do on that play. And good pursuit on the play by number 58, Mitchell Bowling. Plays both offensive and defensive line. Big part of the section title, you know, looking to repeat here. He's also a wrestler, and you can see him with the pin there, the takedown yeah. of Kashmir Bradford Sawyer for the sack. Second down and 18, so a loss of eight on that play. Three receivers here for the Wildcats. Bradford Sawyer out of the shotgun. He's going to throw near his side, and that was just a little bit behind the intended receiver. And that luckily for Wilson, that falls incomplete as Dilworth, the intended receiver, could not bring it in. And broken up on the play by Chipperino. Yeah, and Chipperino, he, he kind of wishes he had that one back because that's another one of those opportunities where if he holds on to that, if he's able to squeeze it, there's nothing but green grass in front of him. He could have taken that back to the house. Third down and 18 with 150 remaining here, and I would think that HFL, with all their timeouts remaining, they might want to take a timeout and see what they can do, save a little bit of time should Wilson not get this first down. Bradford Sawyer takes the snap, looking right. He's going long, had a man open, he's going to overthrow him. That's going to be intercepted on the far sideline. And it's going to be the interception by number three, JT Killenbeck. But again, field position-wise, not the worst thing in the world for Wilson. No, and they're taking shots downfield, looking for that big play. Give it up to the Cougars, disciplined on defense, keeping everything in front of them. Killenbeck just playing outfield on this one, Gene. 
And, you know, again, keeping the play in front of him, able to make the, the pick. It works out to be kind of like what a punt would be when it's all said and done. But another turnover for the Wildcats. Third turnover for Wilson here in this first step. First and 10 at the 23. We've got four wide receivers. Let's see Especially what the, uh, John Russ is thinking here. Sure, he's thinking points as Young fires over the middle and it's behind his intended receiver. Second down, coming up. And it stops the clock here with 137 remaining in the half. That was Ben Carson, the intended receiver. Carson leading the team in receiving yards so far, 126 yards on the season under in tonight's action. Young will hand off, and that's Meacham. Meacham getting ahead of steam. Meacham will be brought down from behind by Edden. It's it across the 35, and they'll mark him all the way up to the 39-yard line. Again, is 16. That's good for another Tracy Door company first down. Get a Tracy Door. You get a whole lot more from the Tracy company. Hurrying it up here. HFL not taking a timeout. Young, man coming off the corner. Young stays in there, and he's got his man over the middle, and that'll be brought down to the 41-yard line. Aiden Gould, Aiden Gould with a reception into HFL territory. Another Tracy Door company first down. Yeah, I like the comparison to Tom Brady. You kind of saw a little bit here, just kind of moving up in the pocket with a quick strike. Big gain. Brody Young looking good on that completion here as they continue to run their hurry-up offense. So three timeouts still remaining for HFL. They get right back up to the line of scrimmage. Young setting up that screen. It's deflected in the air, and it goes incomplete. And not sure who got that tip, but sometimes you can't get to the quarterback. That's just as good. Get your hands up in the air. Good pass rush by the Wildcats on that play. Over on the opposite side of the field. Stopping the clock here. 53 seconds remaining in the half as we're taking a look. We'll see. We've got their paw up on that. Oh, that is going to be coming off the corner. That's Clark, one of the veterans on this team. Four wide here on second down and 10. In a 7 nothing game. Young. Near side, that's going to be caught. Caught by Nolan Smith, and Nolan Smith will have a Tracy Door company first now. Get a Tracy Door, you get a whole lot more from the Tracy family. As HFL on the move. I was waiting for us to call Nolan Smith's name. He paces this team at six foot five, one ninety five. The uh, junior making a big grab there for HFL. Gain of fourteen, right back up to the line of scrimmage, going to the end zone, wanting Smith again. Two men in the same area, and this still goes for the touchdown. Colton Miller pulling that one down. Colton Miller, it's now 13 to nothing. That drive going six plays, 78 yards. Plenty of time, and you see Brody Young with uh, the cannon to the end zone. He had two guys there. Who's going to get it? <laughs> and it turns out that it was going to be... Uh, it was going to be... Uh, well, you, you had um, number nine. Nolan Smith in, in the, the picture there as well, and Colton Miller coming down with it for the touchdown. Usually those don't work out well. That is going to be partially blocked, so does not get over the crossbar. 13-0 HFL with the advantage here over Wilson. Cougars put 13 on the board. Yeah. So coming up at halftime, we got the Empire Tractor Batavia. We're here to help you grow. Halftime report. We'll have this week's MVP Healthcare Health Insurance built around me, scholar athletes. Kevin Roche will be talking to some representatives, administrators from both schools. We've got highlights and more. The Empire Tractor Batavia. We're here to help you grow. Halftime report. Just well, coming up here in just merely a few seconds. There's HFL getting it done thanks to a nice drive. They lead 13 to nothing. Not the prettiest of halves for HFL. 
Gene Mancuso, who is the superintendent of HFL, will be our guest. And this year will be brought to you by those who are saying that you can stop playing such a lot of music. It will be Wilson, by the way, to receive. Remember, this game started out because Wilson did a little pooch kick and their, their special teams got him the ball back. I was going to say the one area of the game where Wilson might have an advantage is special teams with the way the game started and with the partially blocked extra point attempt there on that last HFL touchdown. So pending the return here, that will determine whether Wilson will put the foot on the pedal or not. Just 34 seconds remaining. Wilson with two timeouts remaining. And trying to cut it the opposite way will be Dilworth. Dilworth still on his feet, and yeah, just a lot of uh, lost yardage as that's going to be down back at the 22. Can't really blame Dilworth trying to make a play. Knows his team needs one right now at this stage of the game, down 13 nothing. But unfortunately, uh, negative yardage as he's trying to make a play, going the wrong direction. First and 10, Wildcats. Ryan Gear and that offensive line coming back out onto the field for the Wildcats. Wilson Magnet. Again, 2017, they won the sectional championship over Ron Decoy, but everybody from that team now long gone. Maybe they're watching here tonight pulling for their Wildcats. Pretty staggering to think that they graduated 20 seniors last season, and it's impressive to see how they've started and how this program continues to thrive with that kind of turnover. First and 10 at the 22 as Bradford Sawyer will hand off on the inside and it's going to go to Clark and Clark did he cough it up HFL saying yes and they did whoa boy a big takeaway the fourth takeaway of this half for HFL and it comes very late here. On the far side see what the replay can show here. And Clark the ball here. First and ten from the 30 yard line. Yeah, you had the strip there by uh, Nolan Smith. We're calling his name a lot here late in the first half. Big play and a nice recovery on the play by the Cougars. Let's see if they can tack on another score here before the half runs out. Well, do you hand off to Meacham or are you going for the big strike here? You got the quarterback who can kind of do it, and you got Nolan Smith on the near boundary if they want to go to him. Playbook's open. You have three timeouts. Young will be out of the shotgun, taking a look around here. It's going to set up the screen to the near side. That's going to be incomplete. They really didn't have much. Killing back the intended receiver, but one right at his feet. Yeah, that play was read from the beginning there by Wilson, and it looked like if Killing back were to come down with that, it would have been uh, for a uh, little or, or a loss on that play. So probably better that it fell incomplete to his feet. Second down and 10 as Young will come back to the sideline, get the call. He's got five touchdown passes on the season now. Four wide receivers meet him in the backfield. It'll be a pass. Here comes the pressure standing in the pocket and delivering over the middle. And then Clark with the hit. And again, that's going to be Ben Carson ben with the Carson. catch. Close to the Takes first down, the but the, the, the clock hit. right now, the bigger factor, 8.9 seconds first remaining down. here. Play another Tracy Door company first down. Get a Tracy Door, you get a whole lot more from the Tracy family as we see Brody Young looking poised in the pocket. Yeah, and a big stick at the end of that by Demont Clark, whose name we're calling a lot on defense for the Wildcats. Ben Carson getting up with a little shake of the head, knowing that he took a pretty good lick, but made the play. Got the Cougars a first down. Trying to duplicate the success they had in their last drive. Six plays, 78 yards with that uh, touchdown pass. I hear a little yacht rock here at HFL, Mike Dan. Yes, absolutely, Gene. Our call tonight smooth and lush, just like Michael McDonald's beard. <laughs> That's Pat Fahey spinning the tunes, a longtime PA voice here for Honey Oi Falls lineman. Talking to head coach John Ross, he's wanted to go out of his way to point out things like that just add to the atmosphere here of HFL football. What a great atmosphere. And he was really you know, complimentary of this entire program with all the local kids that show up and show interest in a game. And when we mentioned it earlier, I mean, there are some schools that are just having a hard time fielding a roster. You don't have that problem in HFL. Great support from the community. And they, they came out to have a good time tonight.
And you can't see it on the monitor, but somebody's got a bubble machine here, too. You might, if you see one going by uh, the camera every once in a while, well, yeah, somebody's having some fun out here tonight. So, maybe two plays here. The throw, and that's going to be batted down. That's going to stop the clock with 6.1 to be exact. Now, Carson Joint is the field goal kicker. Got to believe this is a little out of his range here. Looking at a, basically a 37-yard attempt. Ben Carson, the receiver to the top of your screen. Nolan Smith to the bottom. Could be the last play of the half. Young takes the shotgun snap. Young, pump fakes, throws, end zone. Wants a man climbing the ladder. It's going to fall incomplete as Gould was the intended receiver, and that will bring us to the end of the first half. So that late turnover by Wilson does not prove costly. However, as we take a look at the Illuminating Expression scoreboard summary, 13 points in the second quarter for HFL, and that's where we are here at the half. Stay tuned for the Empire Tractor of Batavia halftime report. Empire Tractor of Batavia we're here to help you grow. As Kevin Roche, we go downstairs to our sideline reporter, Kevin. All right, thanks so much, Gene, here with HFL head coach John Russ. Did, weren't able to convert there late, but turnovers have been the key for your defense, haven't they? Yeah, we talk about take, getting turnovers all day. Um, if you can make turnovers happen, you put your offense in better position. So we ran the ball very well in the first half. Got to be executed a little bit better in the second half. It, it, we talked earlier this week about Zach Meacham. Maybe not you guys getting on him about not finding the right hole or following the blockers. He certainly looked like he was following the right guys uh, on that drive there that led to the first touchdown. Yeah, absolutely. We, we got away from running the football a little bit in the first, first half there. We got back to giving the ball to Zach. He's the downhill runner. We're going to get to give the ball to Zach in the second half and hopefully seal it. All right, Coach, best of luck to you. Thank you. We're at halftime here on Friday Night Rivals. HFL with a 13-0 lead over Wilson. Gene Mancusum. The 26, You're watching the Empire Tractor Halftime Report. It 
Well, welcome back to Friday Night Rivals and the Empire Tractor Halftime Report. Time now to introduce you to this week's MVP Healthcare Scholar Athlete, or Scholar Athletes in this case. Haley Sasso is a member of the Varsity Cheerleading Squad at Victor High School. Now, she joins last week's recipient, Julia Sortino of Hilton High School, who is also a varsity cheerleader. The Scholar Athlete Program recognizes students who achieve both on and off the field. Now, at the end of the season, one winner will be selected to receive a $5,000 scholarship to the school of their choice. We are grateful to MVP Healthcare for their generous support of the Scholar Athlete Program. Our score, HFL 13, Wilson nothing. We go downstairs to catch. Kevin Roche. All right, thanks so much, Gene. Here with Gene Mancuso, Superintendent of Schools at HFL. Gene, the reigning Class B champions bringing the first title here last year. What does that mean to this community? Well, as you can tell tonight with the crowd we have, it, it meant a lot, uh, both to the alumni who've been here a long time and, and to the students here. It, it represented a, an, a, a goal, something they could achieve, uh, which is always great. So, yeah, nine last year was an incredible year. Yeah, nine Section 5 championships from your school district across the athletic department. With everything you went through that last year, what does that say about the perseverance of your student-athletes? Well, and their parents and our teachers, uh, they really tried to find as much normal as they could in a world that was anything but. And, and I give the kids uh, a great amount of credit for staying with it because even this team, we shut them down for, for COVID and they still came back and, and won a championship. And I would tell you that's great teaching, and, but also great kids. And speaking of great kids, one of the best student sections in Section 5, the Cougar Freight Train, what is that spirit? that atmosphere and just seeing them back mean to you? Uh, everything. This is, this is you know, 30 years ago, my first classroom. That's what I wanted it to look like. And I'm so excited 30 years later to say, there they are. There those kids are. Uh, they're all HFL. So many great things happening around Section 5 in so many school districts. HFL, certainly a lot of things going on. We'd love to present you with a $500 check from William Matar for your uh, school district. Uh, and thank you so much for having us here on Friday Night Rivals. Uh, we're very excited to have you and uh, go Cougars. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Gene Mancuso, Superintendent of Schools here at HFL. We're at halftime. HFL up 13-0 on Wilson. Okay. Great movements from around the country. You got it. Thank you, Chris. You're on the money tonight, Chris. Watching the Empire Tractor Halftime Report. 
We are at the half here tonight at Hanoi Falls Lima, where the Cougars leading the Wilson Wildcats 13 to nothing. Boy, we have some great moments from across the country each week during halftime here. We'll be showcasing outstanding Thursday night lights and Friday night rivals game highlights from across the country. Here's some of the best from last week's games. Here comes the rush, avoids the rush, rolling out, throwing deep. He's got a man. Touchdown. Touchdown. Blake's got some time going deep. In the double coverage, it's picked off by Trey Rex. Down at the five. Ball pops loose, and the Jets have it. Brummer, across the middle. Touchdown. Hang on. Hangs on to it. Pressure coming, and this one just off the hands now intercepted as it went off Roberson's hands and the pick by the Saints. And they dial up Pence to the end zone. Does he make the catch? Yes, he does. Touchdown, Antlers. Pass again, going over the top. He's got his man to his control. Does oh, he, catch, he it? catch it? Yes, he, he does. It. Oh, my. Woohoo! Smith, oh, the ball gets past him, able to contain it, rolls to the right, throws back upfield. He's got his receiver, middle of the field. He's into the end zone for a touchdown. At the D1 level, McGinnis deep again. They got it again. Oh, my goodness. Avery Sloan this time in a foot race. Sloan to the 20. Puts a move on. Avery Sloan to the 5. He dives. You're watching the Empire Tractor Halftime Report. Yeah, it's been a good one here tonight as we take a look at the scoring summary presented by Illuminating Expressions. 13 to nothing HFL, getting all their points in the second. For Wilson, you get the feeling, Mike Danger, this could be a lot worse for them. They turned the ball, after all over four times here. Right, and some of those turnovers, long interceptions that you could look at as punts as well, but this is shaping up to be one of those games where head coach Greg Mortier said he'd rather see his team lose by 50 than lose the close games that they did in weeks one and two. Good teams make uh, good plays in crunch time. They're going to have plenty of chances to make plays here in the second half. Yeah, let's take a look at uh, some of those halftime highlights, and this was a highlight right at the get-go. Special teams got to be special for Wilson here tonight, and that was Jalen Hardiman with the recovery. However, and they would turn it over on the next play or a few plays after that. Bradford Sawyer with the fumble. 
then this would be a turnover by the Cougars as that would be intercepted by Kydell Myrie. He would return at 40 yards, but again, no points for Wilson as this would be one of those interceptions you were talking about, Mike, where on the near side it acts nothing more like a kind of like a punt. That one by number nine, Colton Miller. Here's our first touchdown of the night, and, and certainly that's been our player so far, Zachary Meacham showing his talent, and then on the near side, boy, two receivers in the same area. Luckily, that worked out okay for HFL fans as Colton Miller pulling that one in. Extra point was not good on that one, so it's 13 nothing. Here, our halftime score here, and kind of a beach theme here tonight with the bubbles and well, the Cougar. He wants to get out on the water here tonight. Cougar's leading here. This is Wilming Matars, Friday Night Rivals, presented by Matthews Automotive on CW Rochester. Miller's had himself a nice game. I forgot he had the yeah. interception and yeah, a touchdown. touchdown yeah. Not bad. Good hands. I think the only put through will be fine here. So, Well, this is where Danger and I go into radio mode and we stretch, so. Yeah, we'll be good. Don't worry about it. You just show things and we'll talk to the pitchers. <coughs> I think Wilson left. <laughs> like, guys. Yeah. Here they come. Here they come. The Cougars are ready to go here. They're back out in the field stretching. We're about two minutes away from the kickoff here in the third quarter. Will be Wilson to receive. So even if it's a, a game that you'd have to say has been more HFL, Wilson has an opportunity to get right back into this thing here early in the second half. Yeah, one play, and they're back in it here early in the second half. And we've seen quarterback uh, Kashmir Bradford Sawyer show off his arm a little bit, throw it deep. Let's see if they can make a connection here early in the second half to make this a game. You know, I'm wondering, too, do you move back Khalil Lewis maybe for a series or two? Khalil Lewis was the quarterback for the first two games of the season for the Wildcats. Yeah, you know what? He's had, he's had a good uh, game on both sides of the ball today, and you can tell he's the clear leader, the lone captain for the uh, Wildcats. His first chance here to, to play H-back this season. As we send it downstairs, Kevin Roach with head coach Greg Mortier. All right, here with uh, head coach Greg Mortier of Wilson. And coach, obviously disappointed with the four turnovers, I'm sure. But did you tell your guys you're only down 13? That's a positive. Yeah, number five team in the state. I told them, I said, this isn't, you know, this isn't week nine in the sectionals. This is week three against the number five team in the state. You know, we got to kind of find out where we are. And, you know, I, obviously we wish the score was a little bit better. But I told them, zero to zero after one should be seven to nothing. We fell asleep a little bit and got, you know, got a little bit down on ourselves and gave up another quick one. But, uh, yeah, we'll see what kind of fight we got in the second half. And you get the ball to start the second half. How to get that offense going? Yeah, absolutely. And, yeah, that's it. Oh, we got we to gotta hang on to the football yeah. and, and not give it away so easily. That's it. All right. Best of luck to you. Appreciate, it. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Guys? All right. Thanks, Kevin. And thanks to uh, head coach Greg Mortier. And, you know, talking with John Russ, 
He certainly has a lot of respect. It seems to be mutual respect between the head coaches here uh, for the work they're both doing. Absolutely. And Coach Greg Moritz here talking about his young team. These kids work hard, and he's hoping that they take advantage of being under the bright lights and using it as an opportunity to grow and learn against the defending section champs. As this will be the first time HFL will kick off in this game. Up by a 13-0 score here. I mean, if there has been an advantage in this game for Wilson, hasn't it been special teams? Maybe it starts with a second-half return for the Wildcats to put themselves in position to make a big play, get back in this game. Well, they have the talent there, and you're wondering, can they get the ball to their main playmakers? That's Damon Clark, number six, and certainly number eight, Khalil Lewis. We'll keep an eye on that. So it is Wilson to receive. It's the A-plus junk removal kickoff. A-plus, we want your junk. And <laughs> I always love when this happens. Like, wait, no, you go over here. We're going over here. <laughs> Surprised that doesn't happen more often. Deep back for the Wildcats. Divine Dilworth, number four. Also back. Callaway and Dilworth back to for the Wildcats. Divine Callaway. And Senior Marinau will be kicking off for the Cougars. Xavier Carbonell will be kicking off here. Carbonell puts his left hand in the air, and we are underway here in the third quarter. And this is going to be brought back by Myrie. And a nice return back in the first half, but he is going to be tackled. Good special teams tackle, and this will begin the drive at the 23 for the Wildcats. It's number two, Donnell Hall. Kyle Myrie on the return. Cashmere Bradford Sawyer. First start here as a sophomore at the quarterback position. Mike Danger, how did you think he fared in the first half? Well, you know what? I thought I liked his decision making, and he's got the arm. Uh, a little bit a little bit too much air on a couple of those deep passes, but if they connect on one of those deep passes, could catch up HFL by surprise here and get right back in this game. Be out of the shotgun here. Takes the high snap, looking left, throws that way, and he's going to get a good completion to Hardiman, Jalen Hardiman. Gets it up outside the numbers to about the 30-yard line. We'll call that a gain of six. Yeah, we haven't seen too much out of the run game with uh, Wilson Magnet tonight. It's been these kind of screen passes to the outside, these outside passes for, you know, three yards, four yards, five yards a pass. But again, you know, Sawyer Brad Bradford Sawyer has been uh, pretty good throwing that ball outside. It's a strength of this offense. Second down and four. Khalil Lewis with the highlight marker type of cleats. You know that's him, but movement before, and I believe this is going to be on the Wildcats. Indeed, the false start. Illegal procedure to call on the Wildcats. So what was a good down and distance all of a sudden now becomes second and nine. Second and ten coming up. Earlier this week, when the when the uh, Wildcats were preparing for the Cougars, Coach Greg Mortier telling his team the kind of statement that it would make to beat the defending Section 5 champs on TV. Let's see if we see that big play here early in the second half from the Wildcats. Zach Meach and the linebackers creeping up near that line of scrimmage. Now he'll drop back as the throw. It's going to be a check down. It's going to be intercepted on the near side. This can go for a pick six. Oh, on the near side it is. Interception return for a touchdown. Touchdown by Donnell Hall for HFL, and the Cougars now lead 19 to nothing. 
Well, on each of the three picks that we've seen tonight from Cashmere Bradford Sawyer, it's just been the case of too much air under it and HFL all over this with Donnell Hall. We've called his name a few times out of the secondary for the Cougar defense, and he makes no mistake about it. Nothing but green grass in front of him taking it to the house for a pick six. 23 yards on the return for Donnell Hall. And that was the fifth turnover on the night. You know what, I should put it in the positive spin. Fifth takeaway of the night yes. for HFL. Cool. Hall, yeah, he'd be happy about that. Making a big play like that. The extra point is up and good. That's another American custom exteriors and interiors touchdown. The home improvement company that cares. 20 to nothing is our score. HFL leading over Wilson. We are early in the third. Turnovers have been an absolute killer tonight for the Wildcats, Gene. You mentioned it, five on the night, three interceptions thrown by Kashmir Bradford Sawyer in his uh, first start here as a sophomore. And he's got, he's got a big arm. We've seen it on display, just not able to connect on some of these deep passes and on that last interception, uh, just a little bit overthrown. Missing his receiver and costing the tune of a pick six by Donnell Hall. We'll see how the young quarterback reacts when he comes out as it'll be Kaidel Myrie once again deep back to return here for Wilson Magnet. It's another A plus junk removal kickoff. A plus. We want your junk. Now HFL in control up by three scores. Xavier Carbonell, he is a senior Cabadell, at six foot. For the Gets this one away and Irie will put it on the turf, picks it back up, running right between the tackles. He's got a seam, Myrie still on his feet. He'll be tackled from behind. So good burst of speed, bringing it back up to the 45-yard line. So Wilson with some decent field position, thanks to number 11, Kaidel Myrie. And great vision by Myrie on that return as well. I mean, he could have been distracted but after mishandling uh, the reception, the return, but but putting his, uh, keeping his vision, keeping his head up, finding the hole. Nice return. And let's see what they can do to start this drive, Gene. First and 10, their own 45-yard line. So the sophomore quarterback, can he shake it off here? Casimir Bradford Sawyer. Or is that going to be a different quarterback? Let's see here. The handoff will go inside. No, they're going to go to Khalil Lewis. So Khalil Lewis is back in at quarterback. So Lewis giving the handoff, and Lewis is going to go back to the sideline. So Lewis taking over at quarterback here for Wilson Meg. Second and five coming up for Wilson. That's tough for Casimir Bradford Sawyer if that uh, is a coach's decision, but I kind of get it by Greg Mortier. You, this is not a game that's not totally out of reach. See if you can get something going with the quarterback change. Second down and five. Clark is the running back. That's Khalil Lewis back at quarterback. Lewis handing it off, and Clark is going to get around that left edge, brings it into HFL territory, but he's going to be short of the first down, getting it for about a gain of three to bring up short, third and short. Third down and three coming up. Well, we mentioned it earlier that uh, Wilson quarterback, Kashmir Bradford Sawyer, this team had his back, knew that he was ready for this role. It's just a sophomore, and really his first experience here against the defending section champs, uh, a rough outing for him, and, and going back now, you see uh, head coach Greg Mortier making the decision to go back to Khalil Lewis, who started the game uh, for the Wildcats at H-back. Yeah, Cashmere Bradford Sawyer, you can see him on the sideline with his helmet on, standing by his teammates on the sideline. Third down and three, as Lewis will be out of the shotgun. Claps his hands, and hands off on the end of run. It's gonna get stood up. Ready for that one, it's a Marion Coley Henderson with his first touch on offense tonight, but that is going to be a loss on the play. Yeah, a little trickeration here as you saw the direct snap and the handoff, and HFL all over it. 
And once again, it's big Nolan Smith first on the scene. 6'5", 195 pound junior. We've called his name a lot on the defensive side of the ball tonight. And he was in the vicinity for one of the uh, touchdown passes earlier tonight for the HFL as well. Yeah, let's give uh, some credit to 56 Carson Joint for helping to break that play up. Coming down the line. Fourth and seven at the 48. It's going to be a punt here that ooh, it does get off in time. And it's going to bounce out of bounds. So HFL up 20 to nothing in their offense. Going on the field here for the first time tonight when we come back. This is William Matar's Friday Night Rivals. It's driven by Matthews Automotive, and this is CW Rochester. During the conclusion of tonight's game, we're going to be selecting the attorney William Matar's player of the game. And, well, this score should hold. I don't know. We could have a fun debate about this. It's been really a true team effort here tonight, offense and defense for HF. Yeah, Zach Meacham has looked good on the offensive side of the ball, carrying the ball. But let's not forget about Colton Miller on both sides of the ball tonight. And just out of reach. The receiver on the far boundary being Nolan Smith. Just out of reach. Brody Young delivering that nice touch. Stops the clock with 8.08 remaining here in the third. Three wide receivers here for the Cougars. Two men in the backfield as Brody Young will be out of the shotgun. Young takes the snap and he'll hand off and then spinning forward and getting it up to about the 38 yard line. I beg your pardon, I, I have my marker wrong here. But on a hard three, so it would be running cool. angry. Look at this, Gene. He's like a Tasmanian devil there in the hole. Nice spin move. Uh, Hard to bring down Donnell Hall with the pick six, the 5'10 junior for the Cougars. Hall will stay in there. Third down and two. We'll see if HFL keeps it on the ground. That's going to be Hall again, and Hall is going to be Matt. Why? I do believe they're going to mark the forward progress good enough for the first down. Cougars stop short on third down. Oh, they did up. not get it. Hakeem takes the field. Oh, the favorable spot there for Wilson. Kyle Myrie steps back inside. And then Kyle Myrie. Get the sense that Myrie is close to breaking one here tonight. And that interception, the long return, and the last kickoff had a long return. He's deep back here for the Wildcats. And that snap is high and having to take off and improvise. And this will be a turnover on down. So special teams and area for HFL certainly that John Ruth is going to want to focus on after this game is that snap high and results in good field position for the Wildcats. Yeah, it hasn't burned them yet in this game, but you saw a missed extra point earlier. Certainly the opening kickoff of the game didn't go their way. And now uh, a failed punt attempt here with the turnover on downs. Good field position for the Wildcats to start this drive down 20 nothing. Keyshawn Chung with the tackle stopping that attempt to get the first down. First and 10 at the HFL 30 yard line. So staying in at quarterback will be Khalil Lewis. And off going between the tackles and that will go about a gain of four. <laughs> it's 
Second down and six. Khalil Lewis out of the shotgun. Team captain. Takes the snap. Going to his left. Lumbering forward. And he'll get it down. Inside the 25. But not enough for the first down. Khalil Lewis also plays basketball. But like many seniors, you'll get to know this next year at Danger. Like they, they don't want to talk about college yeah. plans just yet. Seems a little early in the year to talk about college. Yeah, he does want to play at the next level. I and mean, he looks like he's providing a little bit of a spark offensively for the Wildcats here in the second half. And by the way, follow the, the block of uh, big Malik Key. The center, number 55, the senior, 5'6", 265 up front. See if Wilson can pick this up on third down as the flag coming down from the near side. This would stand for the first down, but what do we have the flag for? Boy, not Clark is not going down. He refuses to go down. If this play stands, what a run. Getting inside the five, but what is the flag all about? Goodness. Well, that's a shame. A procedure call against Wilson. I have to run like that. Flag so instead play. of entering the Connors and Ferris injury law red zone, we are going to go back outside of the 20 yard line. And for Wilson tonight, it's been a night of mistakes, and that one certainly is right near the top of the list. Still worth the receiver in the slot to the left. Lewis out of the shotgun. Third down and seven after the penalty. It'll be a screen pass far side going to Hardeman. Hardeman lowering his shoulder trying to drive those legs toward the first down, down marker. Jalen Hardeman. Hardeman started the night for Wilson by recovering, can't call it an onside kick, but recovering that kickoff Fourth giving Wilson the, and one coming up the ball. For the wild that time he's just a little short, so this will be fourth and one, and without a doubt, Wilson will have to go for this down by 20. Crowd getting into it, Gene. Oh, the HFL fans can make some noise. Fourth and one at the 21. Lewis takes the snap, handing it off, and getting the first down. Demont Clark, Demont Clark, and now that pile continues to move. Clark gets it all the way down to 11. That's a gain of 10 for the Wilson running back. But Clark here in the second half running with purpose, isn't he? I mean, we saw that the one play that got, got caught back for a penalty, but again, moving the pile and keeping those legs churning for the first down. It's good for another Kangaroo first down. Lakeside roofing and contracting, home of Kangaroo. We hop to it. First and 10 at the 11-yard line. So we are in the red zone, the Connors and Ferris injury law red zone. Snap and the handoff going right up the middle and it's gonna be design keeper for Khalil Lewis. Lewis not find much on that left side. I want to say this is the first time we've seen Wilson in the red zone tonight, is it not? It is. Wiggins, no, there's in a, a block there. Nolan Smith with the tackle. Second down and eight. Second down and good. So you can get, technically they could get a first down here. They get it down to the one. Screen pass, which has been kind of the bread and butter, but this time HFL not giving up much room on that play. The pass going to Hardeman for short yardage to bring up third down. 
Well, you mentioned that we've seen this play consistently tonight run by both uh, Khalil Lewis now and Kashmir Bradford Sawyer in the first half. Uh, and they've had some success with it. It's Jack Harvey 61 with the tackle and gives you an idea if uh, the defensive end is reading that right off the bat that HFL knows what's coming. Third down and four from the five. And oh, flag, and this is going to be another penalty. False start called against Wilson. You see Ryan Gary on that in the middle of the uh, defense for HFL. Trying to get uh, some movement there out of Wilson and forcing the false start. Showing blitz. So Wilson will huddle up here. Substitution for HFL is Hayden Meehan. Checking in, the senior on the defensive line. On third down and nine. Third and nine from the 10. Hardeman, the receiver to the far boundary. Lewis out of the shotgun, takes the snap, and on the option will pull it down, keep it himself. Bring up fourth down, fourth down, getting it to about the five, a gain of four. Calling Zach Meacham's name on defense as well as on offense. Playing linebacker here uh, for the Cougars on defense, making the tackle there. And, and right now, I would have to say, is Zach Meacham, he might be one of our leading contenders for player of the game here for the Cougars, should this result stand. Zach Meacham, one of the three touchdowns on the evening as this will bring us under a minute to go here in the third quarter and yeah go for it field goal doesn't do you anything here for Wilson on fourth down the handoff nope it's not going to go anywhere as Clark gets stood up and HFL's defense takes it over on downs Lots of players in on that tackle, including Ryan Gary, number 50. With a flag on the play. It looks like a hold on Wilson. Yeah, so. So we will take a short break as it's HFL taking over here, up by 20. This is William Matar's Friday Night Rivals, driven by Matthews Automotive on CW Rochester. Fantastic eye in the sky lift coverage provided by the Duke Company Equipment Rental Solutions for any size job. HFL taking over at their own six, but this is going to be Meacham and Meacham running with purpose, getting it up to the 21, a gain of 15. Head coach John Russ with a master stroke. You don't have to really get too uh, cute here. All you need to do is hand the ball off to big number 22, Zach Meacham, who came into this game averaging over 12 yards a carry. I don't know what his average uh, yards per carry is this game, but it's got to be up there right around 12 yards because it feels like he's got big chunk yards every time he's been touching the ball tonight. Yeah, averaging 100 yards per Per game 102 to be exact through the season and he's got to be getting close to that that marker now if HFL wanted to they could take it to the quarter here they're moseying up to the line here and Young looks like he's going to snap it indeed he will pump fake still standing in the pocket and eventually he's going to throw it away and this will bring us to the end of the third quarter we had to the fourth and hfl playing like the defending champions they are up by 20 here at home against wilson it's william Matar's friday night rivals driven by matthews automotive on cedarville new rochester
come right to me. We normally don't do this, fan, but we make exceptions for the special people in the house with us. For those who know him, a happy 55th birthday for our good friend Richard Marinelli. 55 tomorrow. Happy birthday, Richie. future of HFL cheerleading. Back here on Friday Night Rivals, Wilson trailing by 20 to HFL at the start of the fourth quarter. You know, Wilson head coach Greg Mortier told us this week that he's frustrated with the start to the year for his program, but he really believes they are on the right path. He said they need to make plays in crunch time, and guys, obviously, they can't have the turnovers or the penalties that they've had so far here tonight. It's hard to recover. Thank you, Kevin, from any game where you turn it over five times. As now it'll be HFL going to the ground game. The Illuminating Expression scoring summary through three quarters. We were scoreless through the first quarter, Mike Danger. Then just some 13 points in the second quarter. And then the only thing we had, the pick six on that last quarter making our score 20 to nothing as we've got a flag on the play to slow things up here looks like this is going to go against wilson tack on some more yardage at the end of the run illuminating expressions where light comes to life maybe a 15 yarder and move it up over the 40 to 41 yard line first to 10 cougars we're going to see a lot of Meacham, aren't we? Four wide receivers. High snap, and well, that's just the smart play. Brody Young covers up inside. No reason to chance anything. Brody Young just going to sit down and loss on the play. We are going to see a lot of Meacham. It's, that's what I would do. Just hand Meacham the ball. And, and by the way, you're going to hear a lot of Meacham here uh, through the course of the next few years within this program as Zach Meacham's younger brother, Matt Meacham, future QB of the program. We're not going to see him, I don't think, tonight, but, you know, starting for JV. We see him on tomorrow, the sideline. Yeah. Tenth grader will be starting tomorrow. So they have to manage those snaps if you're bouncing between JV and varsity. And that's why, even though it is kind of a time maybe you get some other players in there, we will not see the younger Meacham at quarterback tonight. Second down and 16. And the handoff, it's going to go this time to Donnell Hall. You want to say play his game. Remember, Donnell Hall also has the pick six here tonight. Yeah. He's had a nice game running the football as well. He's got a different kind of style of run than Zach Meacham. Zach Meacham is uh, probably more the thunder to Donnell Hall's lighting. You can see that feet and the, and the, the little wiggle that he's got when he gets the ball in space. Third down and eight will be the down in distance. Donnell Hall, part of the future of this team as well. Three receivers bunched to the near side. Brody Young, the senior quarterback, takes the snap. He's going to pitch it over to Hall. And Hall has some room on the near boundary, trying to pick his way forward. Some good blocking. He gets the first down. Aiden Gould and others on the near sideline, helping to pave the way. That's good for a Tracy Door company. First down, get a Tracy Door. You get a whole lot more from the Tracy company. Yeah, and Donnell Hall showing some of that juke here. Just a quick juke out to the outside. And a little power at the end, dragging some defenders for the first down. Cougars drive continues. As the HFL cheerleaders 
Leading the fans here tonight. South Cougar, ladies. The clock moving here in the fourth quarter. Young takes the snap, handing it off, and meets him between the tackles. Good tackle there, and that, that, that's going to be Khalil Lewis coming in, making a stop for no game. Don't you get the sense, Gene, that head coach John Russ here in his 10th year has built something special with this HFL program? 15th year overall within the program. Played D-back and quarterback, went on to play for the Blue Hands of Delaware after he was done here at HFL. Now, he didn't cross paths with Joe Flacco. I want to oh. say, no, that was prior to Flacco's time down there. Right? Like you say Delaware football, you say Flacco, but people at HFL would say Coach Russ setting up the throw far side. It's going to be open. That's going to be the big man, Nolan Smith, first down and getting it down to the 21 yard line. A gain of 32. John Russ not taking his foot off the gas here with his play calling. And Nolan Smith, somebody who we've called a lot, mentioned it earlier. Tallest guy on this uh, Cougar roster, six foot five, 195. The junior making a play in space. Cougars looking to ice this game with this drive right now. Nolan Smith with his ninth catch of the season. This brings us under eight minutes remaining here tonight. It'll be Hall at running back. Hall will get the call, and Hall's going to get wrapped up and dropped. How many times have we call Rajon Ridgeway's name and number tonight? That's a loss of two. Make it a loss of three on the play. The play by the inside linebacker for Wilson. And back to John Russ for a second, Gene. I mean, you know, how impressive that they Rajon have started the season Ridgeway looking as good as they have after graduating 20 seniors last season. That, that spring season that gave the program their loss first section down. title in school history. Second and 13. Yeah, who, who's going to beat him this year? you got to figure they're the favorite. As the handoff going inside to Hall. Hall's going to get around the left side. Hall with some speed. Hall has the first down. He's going to take it down from behind. As Marion Coley Henderson, number 13, with the touchdown saving tack. I'd like to believe that Donnell Hall has been listening to the broadcast tonight, Gene. He probably heard us talking about his teammate, Zach Meacham, potentially being the player of the game. But let's not forget Donnell Hall with the pick six. And now with some tough running yards here in the fourth quarter to help seal this game for the Cougars. A great performance by this young man. I'm chuckling at Ben Carson on that play, the wide receiver who was blocking the last second. No, 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 don't, don't put your hands up in the air. And I don't want to get called for that. So good play, a good block on the outside. And that is another first down presented by the Tracy Door Company. Get a Tracy Door, you get a whole lot more from the Tracy family. First and goal from the eight. Now it's Meacham back in a running back. And whistle, and normally this goes against the offense. And Hall on the sideline taking a spell, grabbing a drink of water. Deserves that, young man. And it'll be a false start against the Cougars. Who have controlled the clock here in the fourth quarter. Trying to make this a quick night for everybody. By the way, we are headed to Batavia coming up next week. Palmac Batavia. Palmac, who gave these Wildcats their first loss of the season week one. So that will be a lot of fun. Hope you can join us. Seven o'clock, we get going. Genesee County next Friday night here on Friday Night Rivals. And off inside, Meacham to the end zone, touchdown! Touchdown, second tonight, fourth on the season on the ground for Zach Meacham. Meacham Nine plays, 94 yards, and that is a way to cap a drive. Another American Custom Exteriors and Interiors touchdown. The home improvement company, Zach Cares. That make it official for a player of the game? I think so. He's had a great game. But you know what else? I mean, his line has been spectacular. And again, this touchdown, much like his first touchdown tonight, virtually untouched, going through some massive holes being opened up by this HFL offensive line. Remember, that drive started at the end of the third quarter 
when HFL took it over on downs. We've got all sorts of movement, but they're going to count it anyways. 27 to nothing is our score. HFL on their way to their third win of the season. Here are William Matar's Friday Night Rivals, driven by Matthews Automotive. They went to school together, huh? No kidding. No, no it's good to know. Good information. So tonight's fantastic eye in the sky lift coverage provided by the Duke Company. Equipment rental solutions for any size job. We always want to get it right here, Mike Danger, on, on, on Friday Night Rivals. And I said earlier, well, the pass didn't cross for Joe Flacco and John Ross at Delaware. They did. Oh, oh. Brother. Yeah, you, you know, maybe some of that elite quarterbacking that we got on Joe Flacco rubbed off on head coach uh, John Ross here. In there. here. I see what you did there. Joe Flacco. is a Super Bowl winning quarterback. An elite quarterback yeah. in the NFL. Absolutely. Just ask him. Head coach John Russ getting some time there at Delaware with a Super Bowl MVP. 540 remaining here. And for Wilson, you want something positive here. You take a look at some of these great fans here tonight. A-plus junk removal kickoff. A-plus, we want your junk. Run up on the near side. And that will be Dilworth. And Dilworth still on his feet. And he'll be knocked out of bounds in front of the HFL bench. Goodbye, close Dilworth. to midfield. Hey, special teams has been a positive for Wilson. I would say that. I mean, they've made some plays in the return game. They've had a couple of uh, of uh, plays, you know, blocked uh, extra point. Of course, the kickoff to start the game that caught HFL napping a little bit. I'm sure HFL will use that as a... Point oh, of emphasis yeah. in practice this week. Oh, yeah. I want to clean that up like before this next ends week. up being the final score. You're showing plays like that. There were a few turnovers, so there's certainly reasons for Coach Ross to keep working his guys hard here. Let's be honest, we're not even at the halfway point of the season. That is what we're playing for. Look at that beauty. Yeah. You know what I like? I like when we were week one and you saw. RH get excited, and last week we were at Victor, and you saw Victor get excited. It doesn't oh, yeah. mean a lot when you get the trophy here. Yeah, you'll see these kids hoisting it at the end of the game, and it's a special moment. It's a lot of fun. Timeout called by Wilson. So with 5.33 remaining, they didn't like something they saw. It was something that Coach uh, Greg Mortier of Wilson said to us this week when we had the chance to talk to him. We knew that, the, you know, this is an opportunity for his kids, and any team that plays on Friday Night Rivals knows the opportunity to play under the bright lights, to be on TV. Use it as an opportunity to grow and learn. And if there's a positive for this, I would say, you know what, Cashmere Bradford Sawyer, not the greatest of games with the amount of interceptions, three interceptions for the young sophomore, but a learning experience that he can grow from them. We've seen plenty. He's definitely got some uh, some strength to that arm, and I know we're going to see him again in the future. And when we have a second, we'd like to take a moment to thank our wonderful sponsor partners, William Matar Law, Matthews Auto, MVP Healthcare, and Empire Tractor, who, through their contributions to the program, make games like this possible for viewers like you at home. We'd also like to thank our great sponsor, supporters, for their contribution to the 2021 Friday Night Wilders Telecast, Lakeside Roofing, Tracy Door Company, American Custom Exteriors and Interiors, A-plus junk removal, illuminating expressions, Connors and Ferris, Apollo Concrete, and the Duke Company. Thank you so much to everybody. As the handoff going, and it's going to be Clark getting the call, no gain on the play. Now, as I just mentioned, Bradford Sawyer being able to use tonight as a learning experience. It looks like head coach Greg Mortier is going to put the sophomore back in at quarterback here to close out the game. I love, I love this move because give him something feel good about you, you remember always kind of the last thing you don't want to remember like the little time out you had to take there in the third quarter it's 
I think Bradford Sawyer did some nice things back in the first half, just didn't have any points to show for. And I think one of the remaining questions is will this, will this uh, Cougar defense remain uh, tight and keep the shutout intact? The inside handoff going, and Pat Elmire, another player we've gotten to know here tonight. He uh, goes ahead for about a gain of three to bring up third and seven. Inside yeah, I'm impressed by this uh, Wilson squad, given all the adversity that they had to deal with in the spring. The lack of continuity. Only three seniors starting offensively. And boy, we were really impressed by their captain, Khalil Lewis, who we had the chance to meet earlier this week. He wants to go into psychology or construction management and hopefully play at the next level as well. Sam Lewis gets stood up. Carson joined the middle linebacker, reading that one to bring up fourth down. And this might be the last uh, time we see Wilson on offense tonight, looking at uh, fourth and ten. Kevin Roach down on the sidelines. He is going to be presenting that trophy to HFL following this one. Fourth down. Cashmere Bradford Sawyer out of the shotgun. Three wide receivers. See if he puts it up in the air. We get movement before they let it go as Bradford Sawyer is going to keep it, pull it down himself. Makes one man miss. In the end, not enough for the first down. So on downs, HFL will take over here as we have just a little over three minutes well, remaining here. Yeah, Brian Gary uh, once again on the defensive side of the ball playing the linebacker position with the tackle. The 6-1 junior. One more break here. 27 nothing. Watch HFL close this one out. When we come back, it's William Matar's Friday Night Rivals driven by Matthews Automotive. Okay. Sounds good. 22. Yep, Zach Meacham. Our William Matar player of the game. Boy, a lot of candidates here, but we got to go with the guy who scored twice tonight. That being uh, one of the leaders on this team. One of the captains, Zach Meacham. Two touchdowns tonight for the senior running back. Also made some nice tackles at the linebacker position. As he is our player of the game for HFL. Yep. And just ripped off another long run. This really shows you how balanced this HFL offensive attack is. You've seen him throw the ball with Brady Young, with Brody Young's arm, and, and you've seen Meacham, and you've seen Hall with some big yards on the ground as well. Meacham going over 100 yards here as... It's going to be a tough team to beat here down the stretch, Gene, for sure. And you get the idea that the, the, the sectional championship is going to have to go through HFL. Four wide receivers, and now it's time to milk the clock here. Not quite time for the victory formation as back to Hall, Donnell Hall, making a man miss in the backfield. Donnell and Hall. he'll get a short gain on the play. Javon Williams had a chance, so he slowed him up just a little bit. I think John Russ going to the uh, Kevin Neenan section of his playbook here to uh, wrap up the game. <laughs> what, what is that, like four corners basketball? Kevin Neenan being the men's bas yeah. boys basketball coach here at HFL who I, I would bet is watching tonight, because the guy loves sports. Second down and 10 is, now we're under two minutes to go here. We love Kevin, except he's a Yankee fan. Second down and 10, and off. Tackled about a game two. All the ball three, some game good game tackling game. Uh, here at the end of the game by the Wildcats. And we've seen some pretty good licks. This uh, this defense, they are physical. And one of the things that they wanted to 
show tonight is they could be fundamentally sound, finish their tackles. We've seen plenty of that tonight out of this uh, game Wildcats defense. Well, they could kneel it down here. That they're going to just kind of line up here on third down and eight at the 31. Eight men in the box here for Wilson. As the handoff going inside as Hall makes a man miss. Hall keeping those legs moving. He gets tackled inbounds short of the marker. To bring up fourth down and five. Good to see Hall get up after that one. Looked like he was a little groggy on that. Ricky Hate to see an injury at the end of the game. Griffin Mayo will check in here, but I'm not sure that the HFL will run another play here. As the fans begin to applaud here at HFL, and that will do it here tonight as the final seconds will roll down. The Cougars move to 3 and 0 on the season. The defending champs are going to be tough to bring down Evan Roche. And your post game show coming your way next here as we take a look at the Illuminating Expressions scoring summary 27 to nothing. Illuminating Expressions are where life comes, light comes to life. This is William Matar's Friday Night Rivals. And on behalf of the HFL, safe ride home, planet nation, please. Thanks for coming out. Start spreading the news. I'm leaving today. I want to be proud. We are the door. Got it. Twenty-seven, nothing. Our final score here tonight on Friday Night Rivals. HFL is head coach John Russ addressing his team momentarily. We will send it down to Kevin Roche and. Boy, a little bit of everything here tonight. Ground game, he had a pass in the air for a touchdown, and it's certainly a pick six. As we send it downstairs to Kevin Roche. All right, guys, thank you so much here with HFL head coach John Russ. 27 nothing over Wilson today. Congratulations to HFL 3-0 on the season. We will be with you from Batavia, Palmac and Batavia next week for our director on site tonight, Steve Sinusol, for Chris 
back at control for Kevin Roche, Mike Danger. My name is Gene Battaglia. Thank you for watching here. William Matar's Friday Night Rivals driven by Matthews Automotive on CW Rochester.